so for today's lab activity, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting a drum on the off-car brake lathe. Um, the drum that we're going to be using is going to be off of a 2014 Jeep Patriot. It's the rear drum brake. Um, what we're going to have to do right first and foremost is measure to make sure that we're uh, within the limits that we can machine this. Um, conveniently, it does have the limit cast into it, so our limit is 203.6 millimeters. Um, now, unlike discs where you have a minimum thickness, what we have is we actually have a maximum diameter. So we want whatever we measure to be under what our maximum diameter is allowed. Um, so you will need a special micrometer to be able to do this. So with our micrometer zeroed out, we're going to go right across the top. And we have these leveling bars that we need to drop on top of the drum itself and then go straight across and measure and i have a measurement of 126.9 millimeters so that's under what our maximum is so this is cuttable um, we'll try to stay in the uh, millimeter range when we, when we go to cut material off it as well so this is a this is a um, drum that is deemed cuttable um, one of the things to also take into consideration is to check for outer roundness on drums. Um, drums can very easily be warped if uh, the, the customer is stopped in a pool of water um, and it will cool on one side causing the drum to warp. Um, I checked for outer roundness and we're, we're okay with this drum. Uh, there always is some slight amount of outer roundness anytime you machine these so you will get a different tone um, on the cutting blade than you would on a disc. Um, so what we need to do now is we need to mount our drum to the brake blade itself. So we're going to put it into a quick chuck. And we're going to put the put it down, the wheel face down, and tighten up the chuck. Get it nice and snug. Make sure the other side's nice and tight. Okay, so from here what we need to do is we need to get the inside adapter that's going to be our first component that goes onto the brake lathe. Now, when it comes to discs, you want to try to get as large as you possibly can because you have a, a larger clamping force and you're less likely to have distortion of uh, the disc brake. Unfortunately, with drums, we have, the, um, we have to take into consideration the cutting head itself. The cutting head is going to be cutting from the inside, so we can't, you know, maximize this entire space. So we need to try to get the largest hub assembly versus where our drum is, where our uh, drum cutting head is going to be. So that's going to be um, equivalent to what we're going to have with the actual um, machine itself. So if I have this set up right like this, I can see that my cutting head is, uh, you know, clear of the actual hub itself. So we're not going to come into contact or crash the cutting head off of that. Um, so we have our um, centering hub first. Because we're using a chuck, we don't need, we don't require any centering pucks or uh, or springs, so we can mount this on. We need a company amount of spacers to take up the remaining slack in the motor spindle, and again, these uh, the retaining nut for the spindle is going to be left-hand thread. So to tighten it, you have to go to the left. To loosen it, you got to go to the right. Give it a couple bumps there real quick. Drive the cutting blade in. And again, making sure that the drum is as crude as we can possibly get it. Um, drums do, again, like I said, tend to try to warp. They also hold a majority of their weight on the outside. So it's very, very difficult to uh, get them to, to run nice and true. Um, this drum's pretty close, probably good enough for cutting. So our next stage is we're going to do the anti-chatter pan uh, mechanism. So we're going to be using these spring clamps that you normally use on discs because they fit better. Um, the drum itself is kind of a, a, a funny shaped drum in the sense that there's not a big flat area. Um, this is to have it, uh, this particular design has a really big um, uh, backing plate um, so that it, it can prevent water from getting in. So it's a, uh, um, it, it it helps in the sense that it prevents it from, from getting stuck anywhere. Um, one of the other ways that you normally are going to have an anti-chatter mechanism for a drum would be one of these belts. 
and you'd wrap it around the drum. Um, this is a bit overkill for this particular drum. It's, it's a fairly small one. So we're going to use our anti-chatter springs, which can be slightly difficult to put on um, on a small diameter like this. But I'm going to put them in this outer groove. Um, this is where the, you're most likely to have any chatter, simply because um, that's where the drum's going to distort itself when you're actually working. So what we're going to do now is I already have the disc cutting head off and I have it set up uh, with the drum cutting head extended out so we can, we can move it in the right location. Um, we still are going to use the in and out control for the cutting head. Um, but instead of this actually feeding the cutting head out and pulling along a disc, what this is gonna do is this is actually gonna be uh, the material that we're cutting out. So when we engage the clutch to drum, this isn't going to turn. So this is what we're gonna actually be taking off of the drum. Um, instead, we'll be actually using the drum extractor. Um, they're right here. Uh, same motor control, same power on and everything, uh, just like the uh, running discs. So I'm gonna turn the motor on. Tracks the cutting head so that it's you know sort of midway into the uh, the drum itself, and we're gonna wait for it to hear to hear it make contact. So from here, then we're going to turn the drum head all the way in. Now it's really key that we don't crash the cutting head. Um, what I'm referring to is I'm referring to the actual space that's that's where the the head can actually hit the hub face of the drum. So it's really important to make sure that we don't get to a point where we could potentially crash that. So right about there should be good. So our dial here is in millimeters or inches. I have the millimeter setting up first. So if I match it down and then lock it up, what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, three or two tenths of a millimeter. We're going to engage the clutch to drum and then turn our motor speed to a single pass speed. So from here now we'll be able to uh, cut the drum. Make sure to listen for a nice even cut um, you don't want to hear it fluttering at all again it's just like a disc brake um, if you have any fluttering then that's going to indicate a, a warp or you're, or you're uh, cutting a groove into it um, now we may get some chatter at the end of this drum uh, there's really kind of no avoiding that um, drums are a little bit more resilient to not making noise in that sense but we still want to uh, try to do our best with the anti-chatter pads and controlling motor speed and having the right size hub uh, to prevent any chatter. So we're getting towards the end and we should be pretty good to go. So with that, we're right at the end. So we, we're gonna 
power off our motor, disengage the clutch, and turn the cutting head in so we can kind of see what kind of finish we got on the actual drum face itself. Um, that's looking pretty good. Um, I don't see any patterns or groove cuts cut in it, so we should be able to uh, get this out and measure it and see if we're within tolerance. Again, we're always gonna check the measurements after we do our machining cuts, simply because we run the risk of uh, cutting it a little bit too thin. Again, it's left-hand threads for the spindle nut, so it's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. And the, uh, the anti-chatter springs can shoot off like that, so that's why it's a good idea to always wear safety glasses. All right, so without unchecking it, what we'll do is we'll measure our final diameter. And again, we want our diameter of our drum to be under what our maximum is, and our maximum for this is 203.6 millimeters. So with the gauge zeroed out, go right on the lugs, and we're 127.34. Um, so we're still within um, our maximum diameter, so we, this drum is still usable, so we can uh, clean this up and uh, run this on the vehicle. Um, you want to treat the drum just like you would a disc where we're going to spray this down with brake clean. Um, we also want to, too, and I already kind of did, take any of the rust off of the hub facing surface. Um, if you have a little bit of rust buildup between this and the actual axle hub or the wheel bearing hub, uh, you run the risk of this not going on flush and the wheel becoming loose uh, over time. So you want to make sure you clean all the rust off of that as well as all the rust off the wheel face. Um, that's you know one of the steps to making sure that your wheel is going to be on nice and tight. So with our chuck off, all we got to do is clean this up, a little brake clean on this, replace our brake shoes and we should be good to go. So I appreciate you watching. We'll see you in the next video.